Supposedly, it was used in each of the 159 counties. Prior to the November 3rd election, all our software had never been used in Georgia before. We had no experience with it. The Arlo system is purported to be an independent auditing system that was used to compare manual vote counts to the Dominion system count in Georgia. The Arlo system is owned by Voting Works, a nonprofit company of approximately 10 employees based in California that is primarily funded and sanctioned by DHS and CISA. Former director of CISA, Chris Krebs, described the Arlo software in a November 2019 article on the before there, the election. Somebody else at a time when we real. know foreign actors are attempting to interfere and cast doubt on our democratic process, it's incredibly important that election, elections are secure, resilient, and transparent. For years, we have promoted the value of auditability in, in election security. It was a natural extension to support this Arlo open source auditing tool for use by election officials and vendors alike. Voting Works founder Ben Adida stated in the same article, CISA helped fund the engineering development of Arlo to ensure it was free and open source. Free meaning no cost, open source meaning easily accessible by a coder to see how the code works. In addition to the software, CISA's organization will be offering states, this was a year ago, low cost hosting and support options, as well as training on how to customize the software for their specific election process. It would be nice to know how much Georgia taxpayer dollars were spent on this free system and, and its consultants. In addition to Georgia, the Arlo software has been deployed in other states. Pending audits are being considered or had been considered for Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, Missouri, Virginia, California, Colorado, Rhode Island, and Ohio. I should note that all the states uh, that will use Arlo may not use it the way Georgia used it. Georgia used it to do a 100% audit of 5 million votes. The, the most standard way to use Arlo is to take a random sampling and test to see if the um, votes show that the st statistically relevant number of ballots did or did not deviate from the final margin. So they're just looking at margins as they test the random ballots. I have um, um, in my written statement, I have links to the sources for these states that are, are considering using <coughs> Arlo or did use Arlo. The Arlo software is an internet cloud-based web application there is no need for local servers. The tallying computers contain the Arlo client software, which is a small piece of software that is phoning home to the mothership. Um, and it's connected to the internet via local wireless network. Each tallying table in Gwinnett County contained one laptop and two election workers who would enter data into the Arlo application. From what I could see from six feet away, that there were two people sitting side by side entering data and verifying the data from batch tally sheets. They entered into the database form the batch ID, the vote t uh, count for Trump, count for Biden and Jorgensen, and then the total. Individual batch tally sheets had contained handwritten ballot totals, totals recorded onto a standard paper form earlier by election workers who were actually counting the physical ballots, a stack at a time, an average of 100 ballots per sheet. Sheets were signed by election workers who had previously counted them um, at separate tables. At peak times, there were approximately 50 laptops on the counting floor. At least one post-it note was seen on an election worker's table containing, containing the wireless password for the 50 computers con to connect to a local network used to transfer Arlo data via internet to the Secretary of State's office. I asked a, vis a visiting consultant at the Gwinnett site who was very familiar with Arlo and was obviously responsible for the training of the workers there about the location of a local Arlo server and if local backup tallies were being kept. She responded that there were no central collection server computer or local tallying, tallying application located in Gwinnett County 
or any other county in the state as far as she was aware. So wait a minute, let me stop you right there. Are you saying that there was no, that information that was put into the Arlo system was not kept locally? That's correct. And it, and it was sent to the cloud? Five million of them. Okay, thank you. Um, as far as she was aware, no such counts of independent data or their existence uh, were being kept. For each county to obtain final Arlo results, the state would notify them of their total. This is referred to as a top-down auditing process, and it's not a preferred method of, of formalized validation, which deploys a bottom-up approach. The numbers from the bottom challenge the numbers at the top, not the numbers at the top tell the bottom what they counted. That's just backwards. I provided detailed information in my affidavit of the Arlo, of the Arlo system regarding the open source aspects of it that while transparent also make it vulnerable, especially since the code that is used to execute can be seen and analyzed by outside sources. Furthermore, a cloud-based web app can easily be intercepted by those in the know, especially anyone who contains a network password. Really. Lastly, my affidavit shows actual code available in the public domain and linked to the voting works, linked to by the Bo voting works webpage. There is at least one code example that has been on the reference site for over eight months that can be used to hack Arlo application applications. The code example includes detailed coders notes that describes how to detect a ha hack attempt attempt, but more alarmingly, how to actually grant administrative access to any user who turns that access on and off by simply setting a programming variable. Many of you are, are, are aware that the Arlo audit that was deployed at the request of the governor's office was used to collect and tally presidential vote information from approximately 5 million or 100% of the ballots cast in 159 counties in Georgia. I have repeatedly referred to the Arlo tally as a purported audit because I personally do not believe that a bona fide audit was actually performed. A true audit would have collected additional validation data in the form of independent backup data from the 159 counties. If such an independent check of all the collected data was actually performed and has not been reported by the Secretary of State's office to the public as far as I'm aware. And I've looked all over his site for all of the files and I've analyzed, analyzed a lot of data sheets and I've not seen any, any independent count of Arlo data or challenging of the Arlo data by an independent source of data. Hopefully this backup data still exists in the form of the, the paper ballots that were being uh, entered electronically. There's a piece of paper out there. Uh, there's in the, in the state of, in Gwinnett County, there's probably 4,000 of those sheets of paper and across the state, there's probably 50,000 of those sheets. So if everybody followed the same uh, procedure. According to Georgia's local government records retention schedules, LG 07056 on recount records, all records related to recounting or recanvassing of the votes cast in an election shall be retained for, for two years. So Georgians and their elected and appointed officials have 23 months if so compelled to perform a more formalized actual validation of the presidential race vote count using batch sheet records that must be maintained in each county as required by law. I contend that such an audit can be conducted in a far less intensive data validation process compared to counting every vote again. For your committee's, committee's considerations, I have provided a suggested procedure appended to the end of my written statement describing a simple validation process for the Arlo data. Finally, these questions should be asked and answered regarding the Arlo central database and server application. Is there a record of who actually performed the final tally at the Secretary of State's office using a, the central server's cloud application? Were any of these central server administrators connected to Dominion as employees or consultants? Were there any electronic connections to Dominion, Dominion systems or Dominion data in any way during the Arlo audit counts? Were the Arlo server administrators comprised of properly trained elections officials who were employees of the state of Georgia or appointees? Were any Arlo server administrators outside consultants whose names and credentials, credentials can be shared with the public? 
what was the process of collecting the Arlo data at the Secretary of State level? Was that process witnessed by Democratic and Republican monitors? Senators, after the most recent November 3rd election, scarce few of the aforementioned validation type records or documents have been shared with the public and they may not even exist at all. The web-based, potentially vulnerable, centrally tallied and possibly compromised Arlo system was used and might be used again in January to provide an unvalidated audit of the Dominion vote count. I implore you to ask the Secretary of State to provide proof that there were no attempts to hack or manipulate the Arlo vote totals in each county or, or at the state's server. Suggested examples of electronic file and software validation methods are also described and have been included at the end of my written statement. If such measures have already been performed, these records should be shared with the public. In conclusion, I and many other Georgia voters are concerned about the lack of transparency regarding the Arlo audit. This concern can easily be alleviated by auditing the audit using proven validation methods for software systems. Finally, as a citizen of the United States and a resident of the state of Georgia and a property owning taxpayer in the county of Gwinnett, I and other voting Americans applaud your efforts to uncover and address the anomalies associated with the November 3rd election. We are also watching with vested interest to see if any of your findings or recommendations will actually be implemented in the collection of, reporting of, auditing of, and finally validation of and certification of the upcoming, upcoming January Senate race.